In this video blog, I'm going to discuss how to ensure your design for your direct mailer communicates what you want it to. The key to doing this is using a communication hierarchy. I learned this process from a coworker of mine when I was working in consumer packaged goods. What a communication hierarchy is, is basically a list in priority of the things you want to communicate in a direct mailer. For this video blog, I'm going to use a direct mailer I did for one of my customers, which you can see here. Here's an example of a communication hierarchy. As you can see, the items that I want to communicate are listed in order of priority. So the first thing I want to communicate with this particular direct mailer was the offer, then the call to action, then I wanted some hot drink glamour shots to get people interested and show what the direct mailer was in relation to, the benefits of picking this particular supplier, the branding of the supplier, and then the online destinations. For any direct mailer, you need to have a set strategy. For this video blog, I won't go into specifically how to structure a strategy, but what I will talk to here is what we were trying to do was one, first off, get their attention by having a compelling offer, and secondly, we wanted them to take action, so we made that our second item on our communication hierarchy. The offer was first, though, even though the call to action is more important, because if the receiver did not see the offer, there would be no reason for them to read the direct mail and no reason for them to take action. So taking a look at the direct mailer, you will see that the offer, which is free great tasting coffee, is very prominent on the front of the direct mailer. When you look at the back of the direct mailer, you will see again that free coffee is strong and prominent. So overall, when you're looking at the direct mailer, both the front and the back, the number one thing that is communicated is the offer, which is free coffee. The second item on the communication hierarchy was the call to action. That would be the lines telling the receiver to take action, check out the website, and call the supplier. You will notice again on the back that the call to action is prominently displayed at the bottom and it is also displayed on the front. So when you combine both the front and the back, the call to action is the second most prominent message on the direct mail. Third, we wanted to show what the product was that we were selling as well as show some appetite appeal since we are dealing with a drink. And that's why you'll see the cup on the very front of the direct mailer, front and center, large, and a nice aroma coming off the coffee. But again, this item or message is not as strong as the first two items on the communication hierarchy as it's less, less important to the direct mailer. And if you look at the other items on the direct mailer's communication hierarchy, you'll see that what was attempted to be done here was again to keep everything in the proper communication order. So how you can ensure that your direct mailer communicates what you want it to is to set a communication hierarchy and then check the design and the various multiple versions or revisions you get back against the communication hierarchy to make sure that the design delivers on the communication hierarchy. In another video blog I'll go over how to set the strategy for setting that communication hierarchy. If you're located in Waterloo Region and want to take advantage of the offer on this direct mailer, call the number on the screen or send me an email at ckeller at profitworks.ca.